we start at the beginning. Okay. Uh, as a child, were you good at mathematics? Like, was, was mathematics a natural thing for you? Which yeah, is it was very natural. And I, I always liked it. I liked counting. I liked continually multiplying things by two. Although by the time I got to 1,024 or whatever it is, I was I had enough of it. Uh, but uh, I, liked, I liked math. I discovered as a very young kid, maybe four, something called Zeno's Paradox. Did you ever hear of Zeno's Paradox? My father told me that the car could run out of gas. And I was disturbed by that notion. I, it never occurred to me. But then I thought, well, it shouldn't run out. It could always use half of what it has, and then it could use half of that, and then half of that, and it could go on forever, and so it would never run out. So, now, it didn't occur to me, yes, but it wouldn't get very far either, but, uh, but the idea that, in principle, you didn't have to run out of gas was uh, kind of a, a profound thought for a, for a very little boy. Did it feel like this was where your career was going to take you, or were you like a, another boy who dreamed of being a, a baseballer or something? Oh, or no, no, no. The only thing I thought about was I would uh, be a mathematician, whatever exactly that meant. I didn't know quite what it meant, except that I... Had the, had the opportunity to try investing it, and that was interesting. And I thought, you know, I'm going to try another career altogether. And so I went into the money management business, so to speak. So you started with, with some of your dad's money, and that got you a taste yeah. for an interest in yeah, it. Yeah, some family money. And then some other people put up some money, and uh, I did that. Uh, no models. No models for the first two years. So what were you doing then? You were just using cunning and, uh, you know, just no, like, like normal people do. Like normal people do. And I brought in a couple of people to work with me. And uh, we were extremely successful. I think it was just plain good luck. But nonetheless, we were very successful. But I could see that this was a very gut-wrenching business. You know, you come in one morning, you think you're a genius, the markets are for you. We were trading currencies and commodities and financial instruments and so on, not stocks, but those kinds of things. And then the next morning you come and you feel like a jerk, the market's against you. It was very gut-wrenching. And in looking at the patterns of prices, I could see that there was something we could study here, that there were maybe some ways to predict prices, uh, mathematically or statistically. And I started working on that and then brought in some other people and gradually we built models and the models got better and better and finally the models replaced the fundamental stuff. So it took a while. I would have thought with your background and mathematician, this would have almost occurred to you immediately, like you would have straight away seen this. Well, what, what was the two year delay? Well, two things. I saw it pretty early, but, and I brought in a guy who was a wonderful guy also from the code cracking place and he was uh, I thought together we'll we'll start building models that was fairly early but it wasn't right away but he got more interested in the fundamental stuff and he says the models aren't going to be very strong and so on and so forth so we didn't get very far but I knew there were models to be made then I brought in another mathematician and a couple more and a, and a better computer guy and then we started making models which really worked but, you know, the, the general, uh, there's something called the efficient market theory, which says that there's nothing in the data, let's say price data, which will indicate anything about the future, because the price is sort of always right. The price is always right in some sense. But that's just not true. I'm pleased mostly with what, the way my career has gone. Uh, so uh, would I trade part of it for something? I don't know. It's, I, I've never looked back and said, I wish, at least in business, I wish I hadn't done that or I wish I had done this and not that, whatever it is. I've never looked back that way.